What's good, Easy Squad? It's your girl, Kate Easy Baby, and this is the Lyric Breakdown for Exchange, the remix. So, I actually wrote this remix when everything just started to go downhill after I found out that my ex had a new girlfriend. So, how do you move on so fast? Man, that shit is crazy. Just listen though. You know that I still think about you. With me in my bed, vibing, up late talking, simping, wilding. I always was wondering, like, how did she just move on so fast from me? Like, when you feel somebody's love and you feel like it's real genuine and real, like, just real, you just kind of in disbelief and in shock by how they do you after, you know what I'm saying? It's always in my mind. Uh, I think about her though specifically when she was, you know, chilling in my bed with me because we actually uh, stayed together during quarantine. We were actually in lockdown. You know what I'm saying? We stayed together for two months in my house, and uh, we would always just be chilling at nighttime. You know, we'd be vibing up late. You know, and we just be talking about everything, simping, just meaning like. Sometimes we'd be crying, well, she'd be crying because it would just get like emotional, which is what we was talking about, I don't know. And then, while then, of course, just me, you know, be getting freaky a little bit, you know, I don't need to get back into the details, no. <laughs> Crazy how you up and dip, you ain't take no time to trip, playing with my head, girl, I see you got a lot of tricks. I just feel like it's, like, how it ended, it was over text, and... The fact that it was so easy for her to, you know, just leave, you know, after a while. And um, what I mean by, like, she didn't take no time to trip, it's basically like she didn't even say, well, she second-guessed herself. She said she did, but she didn't go through with that. You know what I'm saying? She actually just, you know, she didn't even show that she was tripping. She didn't show her emotions after that, none of that. And even after we broke up, we were still messing around, still doing stuff. So that's what I meant by, like, playing with my head. I see you got a lot of tricks, you know, because mind tricks, mind games, all that. I just want you, nobody else, but you're over here tripping and got somebody else in your bed. Got me brazy, girl, you know that I think about you daily. I'm going crazy, so please. I'm just saying, like, I, I just want you and nobody else. Like, over here tripping, you got somebody else in your bed. You still, you know, you got somebody else in your bed, you're talking to somebody else, you trying to move on when you know you love me, you know what I'm saying? Brazy? I really just went with that because it was different from crazy and like it's not gang affiliated or anything like that and brazy I was actually going with like bitchy and crazy because I was having like attitudes I was like confused I was mad I was angry I was pissed you know because I didn't understand you know her logic behind it I didn't understand anything because she wasn't open she wasn't you know I had to always come to her ask her about stuff like asking how she felt like what was going on why this, why that, you know, so. It was good with us just the other day. We hung out, we was chilling, laughing, eating, drinking, joking about us. At this time, when I actually wrote this, we had just been cool, like, a few days before, you know what I'm saying? We were hanging out, we went, and we ordered food, and we did this little activity that she wanted to do where we got glass plates, like, just write down all the things that you want to let go. You know, she said she saw it on TikTok. So we wrote down everything on our plates, like what we wanted to let go and, uh, you know, what we needed to put past us. And we went to a park and we just threw the plates down and then we broke them, shattered them, you know. It felt good, for sure. But, like, that's what we did that night. We was, it was late at night. We were vibing in the car, you know, just talking. And so I played and we ate and drank stuff and we was just, you know, laughing about everything. You be trying to hide, it's okay, I'ma try to seek. It be hella strong, getting high off of jealousy. This, this, this line right here is, is different because I, I wanted to go with the hide and seek type of um, feel because it's like, you be trying to hide, meaning you be trying to hide like all your emotions and keep them inside and you be trying to stay away from me so that you won't fall back into love or whatever, I don't know. I said, it's okay, like, it's okay that you do that because I'm gonna try to seek, you know, I'm gonna try to find you, I'm gonna try to get down to the bottom of this, you know what I'm saying, because, you know, at the end of the day, I want forever, you know. Getting high off of jealousy meant just, like, 
obviously, you know how you can get high. Well, getting high off of jealousy, it's strong, you know what I'm saying? Because weed is strong, but like getting high off of jealousy, bro, that's a whole different level to me. I think that's even stronger, you know what I'm saying? It's hella strong. Save her for me. Lord, please save her for me. I'm trying to fix myself, you know, I just want back my baby. So, of course, this is self-explanatory, you know. I'm just like, this is a part of the song, too, when he was like, save her for me. But he said it in a different part. Uh, so I just, like, added that back in there. I was like, just love, please save her for me. I'm trying to fix myself. You know I just want my girl back, you know what I'm saying? That's just all that it was about. Shit is getting lazy now. I only hit your line when I'm in the clouds. I could just pull up, pull up to your house. Trying to make it right must be late now. But just please. Eventually, like, it just got to the point where I was just very lazy with it, you know. I just kind of wanted everything to end. I didn't want to talk about it anymore. Because I already knew how she felt and I didn't agree with how things were going. And, like, why things were going certain ways. And, um... So I just really wanted to stop talking about it because I felt like she was getting annoyed talking about it, like, or me bringing it up every time we would talk. So I would only talk to her about it. I would only hit her line up or whatever when I would be, you know, in the clouds, which if you know what that means, you know what it means. But in a different, on a different level, I'm up there. I pulled up to her house a few times, you know, on some very simp stuff you know sad and just wanted to talk it out and stuff and just talk about everything and really getting an understanding so that i know what's going on like that's all like i'm i'm such an open person so when she wasn't that open i was just you know i just felt something because she used to be in the relationship she was very open about everything but then afterwards it was just like like i was shut off you know i was shut out from from her world you get it so like I just pull up to your house, but like trying to make it right, it just would never work. So I, I, that's why I said it must be late now, because it would never work. It would never work. Every time I pull up, you know, and I'm be, I be try to do all this. I try to give her gifts. I try to spoil her. Start to try to like, you know, express my feelings. Tell her I would never do her wrong and like that. And it just would never work, you know. So I was just like, dang. Thought you was forever by my side. Thought you was my ride or die. Had our future planned out. Picture speaking to me loud. See you everywhere I go and I can't help but smile. I really thought like in my head that she was always gonna be with me, no matter what, you know what I'm saying? Like forever by my side. I thought she was gonna be my ride or die because we used to always talk about that. When we was in a relationship, we was like, it, we always be joking about it. Because uh, one time there was this bug that we found in a package of Oreos that we had in the bed. And like, <laughs> she tried to get one. <laughs> she got Oreo, she it was eating it. And then I got the bag, I opened it. It was a big old roach up in there, bruh. I threw the Oreo paint, I threw it on the ground, bruh. I threw it on the freaking ground. And I was like, uh-uh, there's a bug in there. There's a bug in there. She was so scared. So like, eventually the bug got into the bathroom and I was trying to kill it. And she would just stand back in the hallway, and I'm just like, dang, you, you're not no rider, you just a die. Like, it was just funny, because we would always joke about that kind of thing, you know. She would always be like, you not a rider, you not a rider. It was just stuff like that. But we really kept on, like, talking about our future plans together, you know, when it came to, like, birthdays, anniversaries, um, after COVID ended, you know, stuff like that, all the plans that we could you know, do all the plans that we wanted to do in the future, you know, after. So I have like so many pictures still in my camera roll, pictures and videos, everything is still in my camera roll. I tried to delete them, but then it was always, it was always that, that, um, that conscience, you know, it's always like, wait, wait, you might not want to do that. Not, not yet at least. So I got them back. I have them all in this album, so I know that I don't have to see them if I don't want to. Like, around the time, I would always be, like, looking at my camera roll, looking at the pictures, and I'd just be like, dang. And they're speaking to me loud because they were, they meant something, you know, for the long run, and not just for the moment, you get what I'm saying? So, and I just see her, like, everywhere that I go, I went, at least it was before, mostly, but, uh, like, when we would be driving, 
when I'd be driving with my mom, my brother, and it would be at a place where I remember my ex and I were at, or near, right by, and I would just be thinking about that memory that would just, you know, it would just pop up in my head, you know? Um, or like in the house, on the couch, like a certain area that she used to be in and she was doing something goofy in that was really like memorable, or I have an actual memory of in my camera roll. And I just can't help but smile at those kind of things, you know, because they were all great memories. There was nothing wrong with any of those memories. So I just always smile every time that, like, I can imagine her somewhere or I remember that we were somewhere together, you know what I'm saying? Memories, they flood and they talk about my dreams, yo, they bugging. I gave you a promise, yeah, I really meant that. Feeling for that gin love, yeah, I'm that attached. Memories. That's what I mean, like, I kind of talked about it before, like, memories, they just be flooding in my head, okay? Like, I just, like, at nighttime, especially when you think so hard, they just be coming, and they just won't stop, you get what I'm saying? And that's how, how tough it is, but it got worse, you know? My dreams, my nightmares, they really was bugging. They were really messing with me, because I would always still have dreams about her. I would have nightmares about her and her new girlfriend. Like, it would just be so crazy. I wouldn't understand them, and I'd just be like, what? What's going on? Like, why is it happening to me? Like, what did I do so terribly that I deserve to get treated like this? Like, with dreams and nightmares, but nobody's doing it but me. You know what I'm saying? It's my doing because I'm probably thinking too much before I go to sleep. And then, boom, she's in there. I gave her a promise ring, actually, in July. July? Yeah. I gave her a promise ring. Um, it was a Pandora promise ring. It was about like 80 to 90 dollars and uh, it was one that she had talked about when we were actually together i remember like her list like because we had lists for each other like for each other's birthdays or whatever in our phones and that was actually one of the things that she wanted was a pandora ring uh, i got a different one because it really symbolized forever basically and um so i gave her that ring i told her exactly what it meant to me and uh, and she wore it for a long time she wore it. Even when she was talking to the other girls, she was still wore it. Um, but then it was a time where I was just like, hey, like, I can't do this because I feel like I'm, I'm in the way and I feel like I'm still going to continue to be in the way. So I asked her to block me on everything she did. She kind of like erased me almost. That's what I actually asked her to do. So she took off the ring. She didn't wear it anymore. And it was just that kind of thing. But it was always that part of me that was like, dang, I don't really want that. But it was already too late. What I meant by feeling for that gin love, yeah, I'm that attached, is basically like a little diss to everybody else because everybody will always be like, you get attached too easily, you know? Like, what are you doing? Like, you get attached way too easily. Like, why Why do you do that? And um, basically, my ex, she gave me the best love I've ever gotten, ever. You know what I'm saying? Like, I ain't never been genuinely loved like that hard before. So when I get that genuine love, I hold on to it. So that's why I get attached to it, because I want it forever. You know what I'm saying? Being attached means to just be glued to it. That's what you're all about. That's what you're holding on to, because you want it forever. Like, period. We don't talk, that mess gets to me. Yeah. What you see in her, there's no history. Nah. So I'm going to wait for you to come back to me. Girl, only one I see myself with in this world. So, you know, like, obviously this is telling the end of the story. Like, we don't talk. And that really does get to me because I actually wish at least she was in my life as a best friend because we, we really established that type of bond, you know. And I, I mean, like, that's why it's also crazy how she could just dip like that. She could just, like, have no type of communications with me. And I understand it's respectful to her girlfriend. I totally understand that, but it's just like, it's so messed up in a way. You get what I'm saying? And I was like, what do you see in her? There's no history. Well, we never had history either. To be honest, that line just kind of went with what I had put. It actually matched everything. Um, but then again, I'm just like, what do you see in her? Like, out of all that we went through, after how amazing our start was, and like how amazing it could have been, you get what I'm saying? Like, what are you doing? <laughs> I feel like eventually, like, eventually sometime down the road, you know, we're going to find each other again, be, be cool again. I still have her number in my phone. I'm not tripping. I think eventually it will be good. The little clip at the very end, if you listen all the way, 
I, I ask you to say something, I go, you got my whole heart. So what you doing? It's a message, private message. Well, not private, because y'all hearing it, but it's a message to her because it's like, you got, you got everything like from me. I don't understand what you're doing. You know what I'm saying? But it's all good. Thank you guys for watching this lyric breakdown to exchange the remix. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Make sure you guys go listen to it. Maybe go leave a like on the video. But yeah, I really mess with y'all. Thank y'all for listening. Y'all see me in the next video. Stay lit. Yeah. Save for me. Lord, please save for me. The crazy thing about everything is just the fact that you never know what the future holds. You get what I'm saying? But you can't be stuck. Thinking about the future, you can't be stuck in your past. You gotta just be present. So that's what I'm trying to do. Forever, that's what I'm trying to do.